Hi. In this video, I'm going to talk about a feature called Smart Transaction Log Backups. It was introduced in SQL 2017, and uh, I've seen it being implemented a bit incorrectly in a couple of cases, which is why I'm basically creating this video. Now, before we can actually use this particular feature, it's probably better to understand what exactly it was trying to solve, what was the issue that it was trying to fix. Now, what we see typically in a production environment is a scenario where we have uh, a couple of hours or maybe uh, eight hours a day when there's peak usage on the database and then the remainder of the time there's really not much activity going on because everybody goes home and there's not a lot of DML operations, inserts, update, deletes happening inside the database and therefore there's not much volume inside the transaction log file. Now I've seen DBAs implement this feature in such a way that they reduce the number of transaction log backups they take during off-peak hours and I don't agree with that which is why I'm kind of creating this video because what we need to understand about transaction log backups is that the main purpose of it is to meet something called the RPO and the RTO objectives and therefore we need to ensure that our database does not lose data beyond a certain amount of time which is typically considered to be something around 15 minutes so we still go ahead and take backups every 15 minutes and that is just so that we can ensure that we meet our SLA in terms of data recovery so if we are anyway going to go ahead and take backups every 15 minutes then why would we use smart log backups that would be the question and for that we need to first understand how transaction log files work now I'm gonna go ahead and do a very basic example here just to give, get the idea across and uh, what we're doing here is a transaction log file basically consists of something called virtual log files VLFs and let's assume that we have a transaction log file that starts with four VLFs so these are our four VLFs and a VLF can have one of four states basically the first one being empty which is what it starts out with initially and as we start inserting data into it the virtual log file starts becoming active. As you insert more and more data into the database, the active VLF continues to store the current records, whereas historical VLFs move into a state called recovery, which is required so that in case of an unexpected shutdown, the transaction log file is available with the transactions so that the redo undo phase can happen and the database comes back online. Now, as we progress, what we'll see is that the recovery state keeps increasing as the number of people logging in and performing transactions increase and at some point we will reach the limit of virtual log files available at which point something called auto growth happens and when it happens what essentially happens is that the auto growth causes the transaction log file to increase in size and whatever increased space is available now gets marked as empty and we continue with the process of using current etc etc at some point let's say we trigger a transaction log backup the moment we do that what happens is that all the recoverable transactions or all the recoverable transactions inside the rec uh, recoverable virtual, virtual log file will now become reusable and because they are now reusable as soon as we reach the end of this particular allocation of virtual log files let's assume this is current we roll back and essentially we roll back to the beginning of the transaction and this becomes current notice at this point what happens is that while we did take a transaction log, ba log backup at interval F the size of the transaction log file doesn't reduce it continues to remain the same as it was before and if left unchecked what happens is basically we end up with this very large transaction log file and that is the science situation that we're trying to avoid with uh, smart log backups because essentially what we're trying to do is we're trying to find or count the number of reusable transaction log files which is basically a difference in terms of the total number of virtual log files associated with this particular transaction log file and the number of recoverable transaction log uh, virtual log files so what we need to do is basically just count the number of recoverable which in this case would be 2 and the number allocated which would be in this case 7 as long as this is a significantly small number we're fine but if 
left unchecked then we would have almost all of them as recoverable and at that point we know that if more transactions get into the system we are just simply going to go ahead and have more transaction log file growth and this is what we don't want we don't want the transaction log file just growing unexpectedly so in order to control this or in order to monitor this what Microsoft SQL Server has done is they've given us a DMV that we can use to go ahead and query the state of the virtual log files inside the transaction log file and that is available here in this DMF actually called sysdmdb log stats so I've got a database here which is uh, running and you can see that the database is in full recovery model and you can see that currently I've got a total of eight virtual log files and there is only one active virtual log file. Active in this case is a combination of the current as well as the recoverable as you can see here and as this increases we're kind of monitoring it to understand how exactly the transaction log file behavior is happening so that we can decide when to take a backup. In this particular script what you'll see is that I've created three variables called active, total and the last time and I'm querying the DMV over here saying that if the database is a full recovery model then get the time uh, get the count of the total virtual log files for that transaction log file get the count of the active virtual log files for the transaction log file and the time that the last backup was taken and over here in this if statement what I'm doing is I'm taking the difference in terms of the current time and the last backup time it should be greater than 14 which means that we have already reached our uh, RTO objective or the number of active divided by the total virtual log files is greater than 75 percent of the total virtual log files. So essentially I'm saying that either there are too many transactions in the log file and there is a chance that we might trigger an auto growth or we are anyway near the point where we need to take a backup and only under these two scenarios if any one of these two are met do we go ahead and schedule a backup. As you can see here I'm gonna go ahead now and insert some data into this table and while I'm doing that I'm gonna run this and you can see that right now the time since the last backup was 22 minutes which is why the backup got initiated and you can see that it's completed 100 percent successfully next time when I do it you'll see that the backup is not triggered mainly because it's less than one minute and in addition to that the percentage of active to the total is less than 75 percent and therefore taking a backup at this point probably doesn't make much sense because we'll have a really small transaction log file if I wait long enough we will introduce enough transactions into the virtual log files to go ahead and cross the threshold of 75 percent and at that point regardless of the fact that we haven't reached the minimum threshold for taking a backup every 15 minutes the backup will initiate as you can see here it's right now 25 percent so I'm just gonna wait a few minutes until this exceeds the threshold and at that point you should be able to see that uh, the transaction log file backup is initiated at this point you can see that we've already reached 75 percent so if I wait and I've just executed it again and you'll see that now that I've executed it because it's crossed the threshold for 75 percent a backup will be initiated you'll see that the time since the last backup is still only three minutes so I didn't really wait until the entire 15 minute time period is exceeded I waited to see whether the transaction log file has enough virtual log files in it to cross, cross the threshold and that would be the correct way to implement it where you're essentially preventing auto growth by first checking whether the time period has exceeded in which case you still need to meet your RTO or else you've already got to a threshold where waiting any longer would result in auto growth and if either of these conditions are satisfied that's when you take the log backup not necessarily to prevent a log backup just because there are not enough transactions in there what I'm trying to say here is that I see a lot of people doing this where they say that it should be greater than 14 minutes and the threshold should be greater than 75 percent or some other flavor of this particular implementation which I feel is incorrect because it puts you at the risk of actually not being able to meet your SLA. Uh, just a quick heads up uh, you might have noticed that the path over here is where up my, uh, Microsoft SQL Server that's because I'm doing this in a SQL on Linux on Ubuntu basically but uh, essentially the same concept and same logic exactly as it's implemented here works even on the Windows operating systems as well. I hope you've enjoyed this video and it makes it a bit more clear in terms of how to implement this feature and uh, looking forward to hear if you've got any, any other variation that you might have used.
thank you and uh, hope you enjoyed this video